Today's video, we are going to walk you through how to play the 4-2-3-1. Now, this isn't a custom tactics video. This is to actually showcase how to use the formation, the attacking patterns, what we do in the build up and how we defend with the formation as well. I will put the tactics on screen for you so you can see exactly what we were running and what we're looking to do along with the player instructions. So many times you guys look at the tactics and you go and use them, but you don't understand exactly how we want to use it in game. And this sort of breakdown is certainly going to help you if you do enjoy the video just do me a favor like and subscribe it'd be greatly appreciated i really appreciate all your comments recently on the tactics videos but let's go ahead and let's jump into it now we're going to win the ball and in the 4-2-3-1 your dms are so close to your center backs you can work it into the middle and then you have the choice when you play the ball into your dms you can either go out wide to your left attacking mid right attacking mid or you can go into your cam and then look to build forward. It's completely optional. It's one of the best things about the 4-2-3-1. The way we want to play this formation is to basically use triangles all across the pitch. Here we have our two DMs and Vettina. That is the triangle. If we wanted to link up, say, with our left DM, our cam, and our left winger, left attacking mid, that is the triangle. Playing in those three-man kind of movements is always going to be so crucial for you, which is exactly what we do there. We do bring an extra man in, though. We went from Van Persie. We triggered him on that run with that L1, LB button. He's then going to run in behind. We lay it back to Firmino, into Vettina, and then we go into our striker. Now, our striker is a little bit isolated, so we have to take that touch, have a little bit of tight dribbling, and then wait for Van Persie. Pulling out both of those centre-backs, his centre-back, Tamori, is now all the way over here. He's miles out of position. Does that mean? It means we can drive into the box. We can try and get into those areas. Went for the shot with Van Persie. Unfortunately, tight angle, trying to test out that car to see what it's capable of. But you can kind of see how those link-up plays between those players can become so, so crucial into exploiting that defence. We pick the ball up in the middle of the park with Verratti. Some great defensive play from him as the AI, as always is on there with him. Depay pulls in that defender. Those step-overs are so easy to just draw in a left-back, a centre-back, and take that man on. Now, again, what do we do? We tap L1. We send Vettinia for that run in towards the box giving us an option now the opponent's thinking okay i need to cover this run i need to be wary of that and then the fancy footwork unfortunately enough mbappe is there now there was a lot more to this than maybe the first i once saw we've sent vettinia which that's the key part to this build up right if we don't send him and let's say he just chills here he doesn't really need to do much with tamori right now depoy is not a threat he can't score from there so he would then wait for hernandez to get back in position but what do we do? We look for that inwards. We then ball roll and then go for the player lock. This is where you press your left stick and your right stick in together. You then right stick switch. And now we are controlling Vettinia. And the AI is controlling the ball holder. This says to the opponent, okay, he might drop off. He might run into there. I might run into here. Like it basically means I can do whatever I want with this. It's not the AI anymore. But it also says to the opponent, the AI is controlling the pie. Well, the AI will only run in a straight line, basically. It can be a good opportunity for him to come and try and close me down. So I fake the player lock. I now go back to the man that I was controlling with the pie. And we get that little bit of fortunate bounce through. We fake the player lock again. Some really tight dribbling. And we find that through. Those cutbacks, those swept as you want to call it, just go all the way to the byline in this 4-2-3-1. We want to go to there. Don't cut in here. You can fake it like I did if you watch that again. When we get into this area, watch. We go for that little fake dribble on the inside with R1, the agile dribbling, which is so crucial. Faking going backwards. And then we just, whoom, go back the way we came. The little shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, ya. And then we walk past him. And then Mbappe, doing Mbappe things, finding that goal. One of the ways that you can get the 4-2-3-1 to work really well in the attack is using your fullback. Although the instruction is stay back while attacking, don't be afraid to send them and get them forward on a run. So you can see we turn here with Vettinia, which is our center attacking mid, picking that ball up. What we have actually done here is triggered our left back on a run by tapping the L1 button. We'll just rewind it ever so slightly for you so you can just see that little tap of the l1 button up in the top right of your screen you see this little hit literally here as i turn with vitinia bang we tap l1 we're pointing our left analog stick towards vitinia uh towards our left back hazard sorry and he is going to make that overlapping run 
How do we know he's done that? Look at that arm that has now come out. That's him saying, I'm going, I'm making some space for you. So we recycle back in. We see him make that play and then we go for that big switch. Now again, what do we do? We tap the L1 button and we trigger Van Persie this time. We're getting him to make that overlapping run in behind. A little bit of fancy footwork out on the wing, having to recycle because of the pressure that the opponent put on. But the CDM getting forward, driving in towards that byline, and then that extra pass off across. So you can see when we watch this back in full flow, how this all moves, how we plan this attack in our head, and how we work towards that byline. Like it's difficult to get into here. You know, we had to think about so many different things. We had to have good feet here. We had to keep the ball nice and tight with some agile dribbling, some skill cancels. Firmino linking up the step over to drive, pulling the right back, pulling the center back out, and bang one of the loveliest goals you will see. Offensively, the 4-2-3-1 is one of the best formations in the game. It gives you so much solidified defense, midfield play, just everything about it is so good. You can apply pressure with your DMs like we do there with Verratti. Unfortunately, not able to break through. But look, Verratti's caught out of position now. It's okay. We're still in a very healthy back four position. The key thing to do here is to not pull out your center backs and your defenders and go crazy. Just play the long game. We want to try and wait for our Firmino and our Verratti to get back into those positions to allow themselves to be in that area. He ball rolls in. We cover that run. We then obviously want to be mindful of this pass. We get ready. We then switch over to that Marquinhos and then Bamba in case he turns down. He chooses to go back up the same way that he came. And guess who's there? Verratti. Verratti has got back so quickly there. Look at this. He wins. He presses the ball there. We nearly get through in behind. And now he tracks all that way back. And that's why having one of them high defensive work rates midfielders is so crucial in those areas as the opponent looks to build forward. A quick interruption to say we recently started a podcast called Let's Talk FC. Our latest episode is an episode with Richard Buckley, the FIFA esports commentator. A link is in the description and in the comment section. Go and have a listen to that at the end of this video, should you wish to. Now, the opponent is going to look for a slow build up, and you're going to see how the 4 2 3 1 allows you to press with your midfielders, your, your wingers, your left attacking mid and right attacking mid. But how we just play the long game here. We don't really do anything too drastic. We keep constantly switching between our DMs, our defenders, trying to make sure that we keep the space where we want. I don't know why that lags there. Just trying to keep that space where we want and making it very difficult for the opponent to break through. The key part that we're seeing about this as we get a little bit aggressive with Kempembe, everyone's in a good position. We've basically got two banks of four, right? That makes it really difficult for the opponent to play through. He has to move the ball quickly like he does. Now he's in between the lines. Now we're in a very, very difficult situation, right? We then choose to step up. Why? Because Ginola's gone offside now. We can actually be a little bit aggressive here. I read it wrong. I go a little bit too much. He goes for the quick one too. But the key thing is men were goal side of the ball for the whole phase of that play. And we just make it so much more easier to defend. We're not dragging our defenders out drastically in every scenario that we get. We're not being too aggressive. We're not going past the ball. We're not challenging too aggressively. We're keeping every man this side of the ball rather than getting them that side. And in that way, it means that we have numbers. We're there for a block. We're there for a tackle. We're there to step in as and when we can and make it difficult. All out wide from the goalkeeper um, looking to, to build up this counter attack and kind of go forward. What we did there is actually, again, such a key part. Ball comes out, right? What do we do here when we pick this ball up? And you're going to notice this. I talk about this a lot. It's all about triggering runs, right? Watch out. Just trying to freeze it. There you are. I have now tapped L1. And I'm now sending Mbappe on that run. I'll tap it again just to be sure. A lot of you in the comments say, I tap L1 and nothing happens. Give it one or two taps. It's not great, but whatever. It is what it is. So now Mbappe is running. One of my favorite balls to play at the minute is an R1 square, where it would just go in between the two center backs. That's a threat for the opponent. The opponent's worried about that. So watch how he switches to Tamori now. He's obviously very careful of this. Again, I don't know why that's lagging. I apologize. He, he's wary of this. He's careful of it. And because he's careful of it, what does that now mean for us? Well, he's tracking that. We've got all the time on the ball. Again, we trigger Verratti. We trigger Vettinia. They're now making runs. Watch how his DMs, because he's not manually switched to them. He's not, he's not tracking this. 
we now have all this room to operate in and to play in. So instead of going for that pass, we can now find our cam. And this is where this player comes to life. Whoever it is for you, this is where they come to life. You can look for step overs. You can look to drive. Or you can just go for that long range green time finesse as it is so effective on FIFA 23 as well. Remember we spoke about triangles. This right here, again, laying the ball off with Van Persie. Sending him on that run in behind. Going into there. Then into there. And then in behind super super effective we go for that little over the top through ball van percy picks it up some tight dribbling to come back through and bappe with the step overs and then the low driven you might say how do you do a low driven al it's actually very simple all you need to do is tap the shoot button the theoretical logic behind a low driven is to keep the ball along the ground it's really good if the goalkeeper is rushing out or maybe there's a defender in the way to possibly get a block in you have to do the technical terms is 40% or less power. If you look, you have one, two, three, four bars of power in that bottom left. So essentially, 50% is this second bar here. It needs to be somewhere in there. Now, we don't really look at the power bar while we're shooting, or at least I don't. So just tap the shoot button and you'll keep it along the ground. I'm just going to let this play out and we'll watch it together as we see how we defend in the 4 2 3 1. Again, keeping numbers behind, constantly player switching, using second man press, pulling back the striker to help standing up there. A little bit aggressive with Marquinhos, but still the numbers are there to get the block in. Our defenders are where they need to be to stop that ball from going straight on goal and the goalkeeper having to be caused into action. Just look at this constant player switching, constantly moving my players where I want them to be. This switch here trying to get Mbappe back goal side of the ball to put that pressure on from the striker. Think about Lukaku, Antonio. They tend to do it quite well for West Ham and Inter Milan. And then he lays that ball through. We get aggressive. We try to close him down, but we keep ourselves goal side, which is this side of the ball. So we're just using that jockey button there. We're just using jockey because the opponent isn't sprinting. We only sprint when the opponent sprints is kind of the general rule. If they're just dribbling, then we just tend to hold jockey, which is a lot of the times in and around that 18 yard box. Now, what will happen at times as you look to build up, you will get caught and you will lose the ball and players are going to be caught out of position. Bamba is so far away here. We're in a dangerous scenario. So we switch immediately and we cover that Eusebio off. Now he lays that ball out. Marquinhos has to come over again. Look at how we've gone from being in such a bad scenario, let's say, where Bamba was out of position. Marquinhos comes over. We don't commit here. We play the long game, playing the long game and allowing Bamba to get back. And he's now, boom, he's back into action. The defensive line is where it needs to be. If you want to understand why you might be defending bad on FIFA 23, take a look at it. doesn't matter whether you're playing five at the back, three at the back or four at the back. Look at where your team is set up when the opponent has the ball. Our two DMs are where they need to be. Our four defenders are there. Our right attacking mid and left attacking mid are coming back. These guys don't defend themselves. You need to manually switch to them to pull them back. And then our cam is showing. And obviously our striker is where the striker is. And you can just see patience. We're just jockeying. We're waiting. This guy's really techie with the ball at his feet. We're keeping our man goal side. And we're making it so, so frustrating for him to find those skill moves to get past me. It's going to take something special for him to get past that. We mentioned the R1 balls, the R1 squares that I really like. I send Mbappe on a run here. Just a bit of hold up play with Van Persie. And we go for that exact ball, that R1 square. That step over to take that man on. The ball roll scoop. And then the fake of the Magidi coming in so crucial. So again, just keep an eye on this. We send Mbappe, we hold up play, we hold up, we hold up, we hold up, we hold up. R1 square. This is what I'm talking about. It's like a lofted ball and it's just when you're looking for your runner in between the opponent's centre backs. So, so strong at the minute. I'm really liking it with these like high level passes. Step over. We now need to hold up the ball. Look, we've got no one here with us. We need more numbers. We could just keep driving, but Tamori and Smalling are going to clamp us out. So we go for the ball roll scoop turn. We reverse. And then we fake with the Magidi. We push both of our right, uh, right trigger, left trigger in to cancel the skill move to make him think I was going there because that's where that animation goes. And then we can just walk into that gap. The opponent bites on it because he knows that skill move. He knows the animation for it. And then bang, we get that finish through. We'll just let that one play through again so you can kind of see that. This is all, you know, taking advantage of the opponent knowing animations. You know, this is a high level player. So we can use that and then bang, canceling it halfway through and then carry on driving into that space that he's left open to find that finish. So we actually make a mistake here. We get a little bit too aggressive with our fullback. Good switch with Kempembe gets fallen over. Now we get really aggressive with the fullback here. You watch this when this comes out. 
I tried to step in. I, I tried to go in and win the ball here. And in doing so, we're going to leave that space in behind for his man at the bottom of the screen. I don't win that ball, but now what do I do? As soon as I realize that, I, I identify this is a this is a problem. This is a mistake. I need Kimpembe to get ready to cover this. He could look to maybe take a touch and drive here, and I'll take the chance that Marquinhos will be ready if I play a switch to him. But I'm worried about him coming back over into this open space. So I right stick switch over to Kimpembe. Just a nice three o'clock switch there. And then I move him downwards. He's already slightly covering off for that hazard at left back. And then as calm as you like, let's just pass this back to the goalkeeper with a header. Things like that are kind of what make the difference between you limiting the opponent to so little chances. There you have it then. I hope that's helped you understand how to use the 4231. If you do want to catch any of our tactics videos, you can click this link right here and it will take you over to our latest one.